thunder on you. Couple claps of thunder means the storm is coming. We're going to get ahead of it. It's about uh, 15 hours. This is the 17th day of August, 2021. And my dreams were kind of interesting. Uh, a lot of what I experienced during the day, in many cases, the emotions play out in the dream. But the PL is really the note. Dreams are often very bizarre, and it's hard to sort of determine uh, what is what. Well, once you start looking at the emotions, you begin to sort of understand where things are. best results because you get to play people or, or, or situations that you wouldn't be able to do necessarily in real life and determine how you would react to it and the thing is if you're conscious of what you're doing you're conscious of your behavior you try to make your behavior in your dreams which are much more extreme uh, you try to make your behavior in your dreams much more rational in some ways or more case in my case more Christian, uh, uh, the, the 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 attitude, the behaviors need to be uh, almost the same. There are things that I'm aware of when I'm in the wake state, in, in, in sort of called the conscious state, that I am not aware of that aren't necessarily present in the uh, dream state, and I have to be more conscious, uh, more uh, more conscious to make sure, uh, sort of like that to make sure that, that uh, they do become present within the dream. But that only means, uh, you know, the, 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 the manner in which I approach uh, the issues while I'm awake. If I ignore or put off the issues while I'm awake, it's a different thing that I feel. Then I'm going to have a problem later, later on when I go to sleep. But I won't have the practice in a sort of a conscious manner that will influence the, 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 the behavior that I would see if I, if I, when, I, when I am asleep. In other words, your conscious behavior, the things you do while you're awake, will affect the things you do while you're asleep. This is true for your behavior as it is in many cases for your physical things. Uh, many people know there there's often jokes, you know, that if your stomach isn't feeling well, if you go to bed with an st upset stomach, that you'll have bad dreams. And you do. Every time you have your, your, your stomach's not feeling well or, or something like along those lines, you have a dream about it and these dreams aren't necessarily pleasant. And it reflects the the ill state of the body, uh, rather than uh, simply ignoring what the body is going on. In other words, there is an interplay or interconnection, an integration between uh, the body and the mind, which is part of the soul. So these things are, 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 are definitely integrated, they're definitely interconnected. Uh, and this is what Gnosis is about. Gnosis is about uh, sort of accessing the higher awareness. This is why it's actually metaphysics and metanosis rather than gnosis itself. Because you're trying to achieve the higher conscious.
But yeah, these things are difficult because once you do it, start achieving a higher conscious, and not a specific point that you achieve, these are uh, basically uh, generalized points. And once you get there, you'll begin to realize there's a lot more to it than simply simply achieving the higher conscious. That there's a lot of other choices out there on both the left-hand path and the right-hand path. In other words, you go both good and evil. Left-hand path is evil, and the and uh, the right-hand path is good. That's the understanding of left and right. It's no longer political in in metanosis. It is actually now spiritual, and this is where you have good and evil. This good and evil actually plays itself out in politics. The left side, the left, the political left, is fundamentally evil. Uh, the the right tends to pretend to present itself as good, but can be just as evil. Some people on the right are aware of this evil, and they are the wolves in sheep's clothing, designed to to, to trap people. They're the predators. And other people aren't. They're not aware that there's evil there. And so they're trying to be as good as they possibly can be. Uh, and, and this is where you have some opening up in the Illuminati and some of the you know, people higher, higher up. Uh, it's starting to rain. Just outside of the rain cloud. So I've got to get moving. Uh, and who I'm is this? It's, it's dealing with, with, with consciousness, dealing with conscience of people who have the ability to be good, but just maybe never been given the opportunity to be good. They've always seen it to their benefit or to their whatever uh, inclination that, that they're going to be evil. Uh, if you give them an opportunity to do good and they see that they might like it or they'll get some benefit out of it. In other words, you present it in a matter of uh, uh, self-interest. Then you can, you can take a person who is evil and use them for good. But again, the person is not fundamentally evil. But rather, you have a, a situation or an indication that the person is on the surface evil, has done a lot of evil, but there's still an underlying nature of goodness in them. And this is what you're trying to seek, this is what you're trying to bring up, this is what you're trying to cultivate. Now, if you're screaming like Alex Jones, you're not going to do that. Because as soon as you start screaming like Alan Jones, the natural reaction is to simply clam up and, you know, the person retreats into more of a, uh, a defensive state, and that's going to bring up even more evil. Because they're, now they're seeing themselves being attacked. Oh. Almost there. So this is the nature of good and evil, and this is how it plays out in politics. And unfortunately, I think what's, what's going to happen now is we're going to go more and more into a state of clandestine warfare. Uh, right now, the different positions are jockeying around. It's a sort of a... not a withdrawal of troops from Afghanistan, but rather a repositioning uh, for the next battle. So... We'll see what happens, because what ha the thing is, is that most of the troops are exhausted, most of the troops are, have severe psychological problems, uh, and the reason why they want to redeploy them is they don't want these problems coming back to, coming back to uh, regular civilization, but the thing is, that whole problem, the whole issue, is now moved because the destruction of society is more or less complete. Things are falling apart. Uh, we have open theft in San Francisco, uh, and the police aren't even stopping. They're not arresting people. Neither the stores. And again, the stores are now. Uh, what we're seeing is that everyone sees that this is a 
catalogs that there are shortages of everything. Why? Then why would a company stock their shelves full with, with goods and supplies when it's going to be stolen? So what you do is you keep the bare necessity in there. You tell people you're going to have to wait. Or you order online. And this is what happens. More and more people are ordering online. The, the delivery companies, uh, the mail carriers, are all doing very, very well. Uh, this is what, what, what's made Jeff Bezos is making a killing. You know, from Amazon, uh, he's making a killing. That's all mail order. And it's because no one wants to be in contact with each other. So, because they're not going to the store, they're not. Uh, they're afraid of the, of the theft that's going to go on. They're afraid of generally being out because of all the different diseases that are in the area. We have now, you know, the largest case of hypochondria of hypochondria in, in uh, global history. that sort of determines nay or nay in terms of good or bad. The 
there's certain cases you can't deal with the outcome. But the thing is, again, you know, the argument is that now that the Taliban are taking over, the women are going to be abused again. Well, the thing is, the Americans, with the Americans there and, and, and the forces, they abuse the women in their own way anyway. So it doesn't really matter that the Taliban is taking over because the abuse will be, will be more or less continuous. You're not going to have a better environment for women. But that is a fun, fundamentally doesn't exist. Troops use women for their own particular purposes. We understand this, you know, the, 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 the number of, you go into the history of, uh, of the United States in various different wars, and you will find that sexual abuse was always there. And often it was covered over as classified materials because they didn't want to interfere with the war. So this becomes a question now, you know, where do we go from here? And I'm sort of listening around with different pundits. And the problem that all these pundits have is they've got nothing to talk about. guys who has to be heard <laughs> and no one else can say anything except for him because he's drowning everybody out uh, anyways I was listening to, to several of these different pundits uh, and they're all they're, they're both on left and right they're a lot not they're, ne they're nothing like Lionel in many ways because they always have more people who oh they know this and they know that but they're not actually uh, uh, researchers, doctors, and so on and so forth. In other words, it's like the... It's like the... It's like the NIH conferences. There's maybe three... three uh, researchers there and the rest of the audience, the rest of the people, and the thing is, the audience often go, comes up and speaks, and as I said before, the NIH conferences that I've seen, it's basically a week long, there's about a hundred people at the conferences, they have a nice hotel, and because of the way they are, they're all of these sort of Democrat types, uh, there are three main researchers there, and the rest are all administrators, and each needs a turn to get up there and say their piece. Nothing for it except for the actual research itself ever comes out uh, in terms of being significant or important. And the rest of it is just kind of boring with everybody falling asleep. His speeches for the sake of speeches. And this is what, what you see on most of the pundits. The pundits aren't saying anything. As a matter of fact, some of the pundits aren't actually pundits. They're selling stuff. Picture emergency food, uh, food kits. Uh, there's going to be shortages coming soon. You need to buy your kits from me and blah 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 and so on and so forth. And and these are the people who sell emergency rations by the pallet load. Yes, get your pallet today of you know beef jerky or whatever. And it's always this survival stuff, you know, you know, MREs, meals ready to eat. Do you have your bunker ready? I've seen some of these bunkers. And these bunkers, you know, this is, <laughs> are... quite stupid. Because one of the most important parts to put in a bunker is your you will call your immediate or basic bodily functions. This includes going to the bathroom and sleeping. Well, they've got some area for sleeping. They've got most of it stored for food, but no area to go to the bathroom. There is no toilet facility. There is no way of dealing with wastewater and the sort of the needs that go with 
uh, relieving your bodily functions. Nothing like that is there. So exactly, if you're in a bunker, you have to stay in a bunker, where exactly do you go to the bathroom? And if, is it all over the place? Are you going to be living like an animal, living in your own, your own feces? That's not going to be healthy. You're worried about COVID. <laughs> You're worried about CBD. Oh, we need to wear our face masks. Fecal matter is particles of poop that floats around in the air. If you bring your mask into the public bathroom that's, you know, significantly used, you will pick up in the mask the fecal matter. You will then put it on your face and breathe in the fecal matter that the mask has absorbed. Think of that for a minute and ask yourself these health questions. Are you protected from germs? Uh, I don't feel so good. Why? Well, maybe because it's the feces you put the breathing in. You've got to wear two masks. Well, you're not going to get twice the amount of feces. Twice the amount of feces. But it's not the air particles that matter. It's the uh, moisture in the air, the moisture in your breath. Go outside during winter. Anyone who knows, any kid who's gone outside during the winter uh, knows that you can you can see your breath. Although that's all water vapor, and that's where the germs are designed. So it doesn't matter what the mask initially has on it, you know, in terms of what it allows through. As soon as that mask gets wet from your moisture, from your breath, that, ma moist, that mask is now infecting you. It's an infectious agent. So go to the bathroom, you know, take your mask off, go to the bathroom. The air particles, the fecal particles in the air, the water, stick to your mask. Go outside, put the mask back on, you know, to be compliant. And guess what happens? You're now breathing in, you're breathing in, your, breathing in not only your own fumes, but everybody else that has gone before you. Ask yourself, are you healthy? Do you feel good? But none of these, you know, these survivalists, a lot of these are, uh, are Trumpers, and this is what you can call a person a Trumper who really doesn't think but simply follows and acts. That this is like, like you know, these uh, sort of uh, liberals. Anyway, 